Hello, this is Josh Patel back again with another biology video. Today, we will be studying Chapter 11, The Evolution of Populations. We will start with 11.1, .1, Genetic Variation Within a Population. So, a population shares a common gene pool. As we know, a gene pool is all the genes that a certain species or population can acquire. Genetic variation in a population increases the chance that some individuals will survive. So the more diverse people are, the more likely some are to survive than others. So if a natural disaster happens, there's still a probability that some will survive due to their special uniqueness. Genetic variation leads to phenotypic variation. So genetic variation leads to the difference in how we look, basically, and how our physical abilities are. Phenotypic variation is necessary for natural selection. Genetic variation is stored in a population's gene pool. So we need phenotypic variation for natural selection because natural selection picks out bad qualities and keeps good ones. And if everybody's the same, there would be no natural selection. So we need some variation. And so made up of all alleles in a population, allele combinations from when organisms have offspring. So that's what a gene pool is. Allele frequencies measure genetic variation measures how common alleles in it is in a population can be calculated for each allele in a gene pool. So here we're just looking at the allele frequency between brown and green frogs and seeing how common some are and they got the frequency for a green, green allele frog is 58.3 and for a, a brown allele it's 41.7 so it's just showing variation. Genetic variation comes from several sources Mutation is a random chance in the DNA of a gene, and that's one way we can have genetic variation. Can, it can form new alleles, can be passed on to offspring if, re, if reproductive cells, if in reproductive cells, recombinations from new combinations of alleles. So mutations are a random disorder in our DNA. And this can cause a change in our phenotype. For example, blue eyes was a mutation. And it happens to get passed down. So that's another allele added in our gene pool. So this can occur during the cro crossing over in meiosis. This I'm talking about recombination of new alleles. So parent alleles are arranged in new ways in gametes. Not important. Okay, so... Genetic variation comes from several sources. Hyb hybridization is the crossing of two different species. Occurs when individuals can't find mate of their own. So when there's an animal and it can't find anything to mate with of its own species, it sometimes mates with the animal of a close by species. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. So topic of current scientific research, this is a kind of new phenomenon. And we do it in plants all the time. We crossbreed plants to grow two different fruits. So here, I guess it's a tiger that bred with something big. I don't know what it is, though. So 11.2, natural selection in populations. A key concept is populations, not individuals, evolve. So the population as a whole evolves. No one individual can evolve. Natural selection acts on distributions of traits. A normal distribution graph is a bell curve, like this, where most people are average, which is the mean. That's why the peak is bigger than the mean. And then as you go, as you diverge from the mean, you're a little weird, there's less people. Highest frequency near the mean value. Frequencies decrease toward each extreme. Traits not undergoing natural selection have a normal distribution. So if the trait isn't going to affect natural selection, it's probably it's going to be in the mean. Everybody's going to have that trait. Natural selection can change the distribution of traits in one of three ways. Microevolution is evolution within a population. So within the species, a certain population, if, some, if they evolve, that's microevolution. It, it has an observable change in the allele frequencies and can result from natural selection. So natural selection can take one of three paths directional selection, which favors phenotypes at one extreme. So over time, 
the alleles will favor one way at one of the extremes, either high or low. Stabilizing selection favors the intermediate phenotype. So this, you everybody wants to be more normal. And disruptive selection favors both extremes. So not normal. So this type of natural selection favors everything that's not normal. So this is probably a fast type of evolution. Natural selection is not only the mechanism through which populations evolve. So now we're on 11.3, other mechanisms of evolution. Gene flow is the movement of alleles between populations, which kind of makes sense. It says the gene flow, so the genes are moving, and they're moving through the population. Genes flow, gene flow occurs when individuals join new populations and reproduce. So sometimes, usually animals live in groups, and sometimes one group will die off, and maybe one or two survive, and they'll eventually find a new population to live with. So this also increases the gene pool of the new population. Gene flow keeps neighboring populations similar because they'll exchange genes back and forth, which will keep everybody around the same level or same page. Low gene, gene flow increases the chance that two populations will evolve into different species. So if two species of tigers aren't exchanging their genes that frequently, like they never come in touch with each other, they're probably going to evolve into different species because over time, if they never come in contact and interbreed, they'll adapt to their certain part of the environment and eventually look totally different. Genetic drift is a change in allele frequencies due to chance. Genetic drift causes a loss of genetic diversity. So we have to know what bottleneck means first. So a bottleneck is basically when a large part of the population dies from chance. Like, every, anybody can die. The people with good alleles, bad alleles, normal, allele, normal alleles, anybody can die. So this causes genetic drift, which is a loss of genetic diversity. So since a lot of people died, they lost a lot of alleles. Let's say we had, like, if you had three types of people, and maybe w during your bottleneck phase, all of one type of people died, then you wouldn't have that person to interbreed with and create new alleles. So you just lost a whole portion of your gene pool. So it occurs when an event drastically reduces the population size and the bottleneck effect is genetic drift that occurs after a bottleneck event. So basically genetic drift and bottlenecking go hand in hand. The founding of a small population can also lead to genetic drift it occurs when a few individuals start a new population. So this is called the founder effect, and it basically increases genetic drift. So let's say a bird carried seeds of a flower from one a big population to another and started a new population of flowers. So let's say it, it only took two types of seeds while there were three plants. So in the beginning, we have blue, yellow, and orange plants, orange flowers. And in our new population, we only have yellow and blue. So we lost a lot of our alleles here because now there's no orange flowers to breed with. So we only have blue and yellow. So we just lost a big part of our gene pool. Genetic drift has negative effects on a population. Less likely to have some individuals that can adapt. Harmful alleles can be more common due to chance. So when it says less likely, Less, like, less likely to have some individuals that can adapt. So like if we look at our flowers, let's say the orange flowers were really resistant to high heat. If it, Since there are no orange flowers in this population, they'll all die off in, hot, in a hot climate, but here they won't. So it's less likely to adapt. So sexual selection occurs when certain traits increase mating success. Sexual selection occurs due to higher cost of reproduct reproduction for females, and males produce many sperm continuously. So this occurs when certain traits, so if certain traits increases mating success, that means they have desirable traits that the females want. So the females are going to try to get to the males that have the traits they want. Females are more limited in potential offspring each cycle.
So the males are eventually going to compete with each compete with each other to get a mate. There are two types of sexual selection: intrasexual selection, which is competing among males, and intersexual selection. Males display certain traits to females. So intersexual selection would be like when birds they usually show off their bright colored feathers to females in certain islands. So that's males showing their certain traits. Or in this case, they're showing their, I don't know what that is, it might be a neck or a tongue. But it's probably better if it's bright pink, so it's showing off its high quality neck. 11 point, well, okay, we're going to stop here and we're going to do another video for 11.4 through 11.6. So, we just gone over some parts of evolution. We went over basically what causes evolution, how it works. And next we will finish chapter 11. So stay in tune and make sure to watch the next video.